In today's video, we will zoom into the synapse and take a closer look at how neurons communicate. Neurotransmission, or more specifically synaptic transmission, describes the transfer of biological information between two neurons. Transmission takes place at the so-called synapse. The synapse is where the sending neuron, also called the presynaptic cell, comes really close to the neuron receiving the information, known as the postsynaptic cell. As these two cells do not touch each other, this small gap in between is referred to as the synaptic cleft. This is where the magic happens. The synaptic transmission starts off with an action potential that arrives at the axon terminal of the presynaptic cell. In response to that, voltage-gated calcium channels in the cell membrane are activated and, as a result, calcium, which is much more abundant outside the cell, streams into the interior of the cell. The calcium ions fulfill an important role here. Calcium helps to initiate membrane fusion of the vesicles packed with neurotransmitters. When the synaptic vesicles fuse with the membrane at the axon terminal, the neurotransmitters are released into the synaptic cleft. This process is commonly known as exocytosis. There are various neurotransmitters with many different functions. To name a few famous examples, neurotransmitters can be amino acids such as glycine, glutamic acid or GABA. Further, you may have heard about dopamine and maybe even acetylcholine. But as I said, there is way more. When the neurotransmitters are released, they diffuse across the cleft and bind to receptors on the postsynaptic neuron. The response to that is based on the specific neurotransmitter molecule and the respective receptor protein. Receptor activation either leads to an opening or closing of ion channels in the postsynaptic cell membrane. Neurotransmitter receptor interaction can increase the chance that the postsynaptic cell is activated and an action potential is generated that travels down the cell. Some neurotransmitter receptor interactions, however, can also inhibit an electrical signal. This means, depending on the type of synapse, the electrical information can be influenced for further communication in the neuron. Worth mentioning here is that neurotransmitter molecules only bind to receptors for a very short time. Once they detach, the ion channels return to their resting state. The reason for that? Neurotransmitters are enzymatically degraded or reabsorbed by the axon terminal. This phenomenon is very important for the application of medications. If you want to study more about how a neuron is built up, you may check out this video here. Please don't forget to like the video if it was helpful to you. Thanks for watching.